Hello, so let's discuss about the question minimize the heights. Now, this question says given an array ARR denoting the heights of n towers and a positive integer k. For each tower, you must perform exactly one of the following operations exactly once. Okay, so what is it saying? Either we can increase the height of the tower by k or we can decrease the height of the tower by k. We have to find out the minimum possible difference between the heights of the shortest and the tallest tower after you have modified each tower. There is one note which says that it is compulsory to increase or decrease the height by k for each tower. After the operation, the resultant array should not contain any negative integers. All right, focus on this thing. Now, let me first of all try to explain uh, you the question once more, okay, with the help of a sample test case. The values uh, that are given here are 1, 5, 8, and 10. All right. Assuming like these are the heights for the towers, let's say this is your first tower, then you have a tower with height 5, then you, have, then you have a tower with height 8, and then you have a tower with height 10, like this, okay? The question says that you can perform two operations in each of, like, uh, you can perform either of the two operations with each of the elements, okay? And it is compulsory to perform it. What is the operation? We have a value k. Either we can do plus k or we can do minus k with the values. So right now, like even before performing any operation, if we try to check, what is the minimum value that we have? This one, one is the minimum value. We have 10 as the maximum value. The question says that we have to find out the difference between the tallest and the smallest towers. All right. Currently, if we like right now, if you want, if you want to find the difference, it would be 9. But what it says is, firstly, we have to minimize the difference after the operations are performed. Talk, uh, we'll talk about the operations later, but in general, just give me an idea. Suppose this is, your, uh, this is your number line and you have your 1 here and the 10 is present on this side. Right now, the difference is 9. But if you try to minimize this difference, how could you do that? You could increase the value of 1. That means you can add up some values to 1. And you can try to decrease the value of 10. You can subtract some value from 10. So the new integers that we will get after the operations are going to result in a smaller difference. Or you can say minimize the height difference, right? This is V minimizing the height difference. All right, fine. Now I guess you have a little idea about how the question is being asked. How we are going to approach it, now let's try to see that. So a few points that operations of plus k slash minus k is compulsory for all the elements. We have to find out the difference between the smallest and the tallest. All right. And how we do the operations of plus k and minus k, it's up to us to minimize the difference. Now, I, as I've already told you with the intuition that we have to increase the value of a smaller one, we have to decrease the value of bigger one. So it is like kind of in your mind that we will be doing plus k operation here and we would try to do the negative k operation here. But there could be variety of cases and we have to try to analyze it and we have to try to come up with a approach uh, like an approach which uh, which works for all the test cases. All right, let's take a look at it. Now, assuming we have a few values and according to the values, I am designing these towers. Okay, let's suppose I have this tower in the middle of this tower. Let's suppose let's make one more. All right, so these are the towers that are, that are present. Now, one more thing to notice is that uh, the question does not say that the data will be sorted. But for us to form our approach, we require the data to be sorted. So if the array is not sorted, we will perform sorting. Okay. The first thing is that we will perform sorting. Now, after the sorting, we would have an idea that the range that I have, the sequence that I have, it is in a manner that it is growing from smaller to the bigger. Now, what I know is that I have to perform plus k operation to the smaller one and negative k operation to the bigger one, a generic idea. But would that be applicable for all? We have to see that here. Now, if you try to see that, uh, can we apply a negative operation or a positive operation here? For sure, we can apply positive because this would not make your number negative. But there could be a scenario. Let's suppose you have uh, 5, 3, or you can say 5, 13, and 14. All right, these are, these are the numbers. And you have your k as 6. So if you try to subtract the value here, all right, if you try to do minus k for the first element, that would turn to a negative value. 
which the question has prohibited. The question has said that you should not have any negative value. Assuming, assuming that I can have a K which can turn some values negative. Assuming that, that I do have a value K which when subtracted from the values can turn some values negative. All right, so assuming I do have some value K here, I will try to reduce this value. And if I see that it is okay, it is getting negative. That means I have to increase it. I have no other choice. So I will increase this by K. Similarly, let's say I did it with this one. I might have to increase this as well. Okay. Or K would be this bigger that for this tower as well, once we are performing negative K, it is making it go negative. Okay. K is a bigger value for this time. Assume that. So for that also, we have to plus K. That means it will be increasing the value. But there would be a point in our array, there would be a point where no matter if you're subtracting K, you might not still touch the negative line. But for this point is actually going to be very prominent in the, in the solution that we are forming. So once you have it from this point onwards, you can perform negative K in this manner. Let's say this bring, uh, brings down this, this brings down this much value and this brings down this much. So this is the thing. Now, first of all, like by the base case, by the base case, let's say we are, we are not performed much operations here. I'm just talking about the first and last element. So very generically, what I have to do is I have to take my ARR zero. I have to do plus K to it, this element. I have to take ARR N minus one. I have to do minus K to it. Once I have these two values, I would form the difference of it. Okay. I would simply form a difference to it. But now, once I have performed this operation, that means of adding the elements, of adding the k, uh, k to the elements till one point and then trying to subtract it. Well, this point can also be at the first one as well. Okay. Because let's suppose your k is not like uh, you are trying to subtract k from the first element and it is not leading you to a negative number. That's also fine. You have, for, you have already found your point. But if you have not, then we are assuming a point after that. Once you try to subtract K from any of the element, it does not affect. That means it does not uh, make the answer negative. The answer still is positive. So once we have done this operation, okay, once the, this operation is over, then there could be a few possibilities. Now see very carefully what you're doing with this element. You are growing it. What you are doing with these elements, you are, you are just making it smaller. Okay, you are reducing the height of the tower. Well, after these have happened the possibility is that two of the values are getting affected the most in terms of the magnitude first of all just after the point you have reached this value once you reduce your k gets a significant amount of bar lowered okay beyond that the effect would be a little smaller like as compared to this one but this would have the biggest effect on the value when it is getting reduced now this is that uh, like this value which is just one before the point like it could have a highest possible peak because this is the uh, value with like we which is in the increasing order and at this point plus k is being added to it so this in this range is actually the peak point now this peak point and this minimum point can actually replace your previous minimum or your previous maximum and this is just a possibility so what we have to do firstly we have found this by the base case. Next thing, after we have applied this operation, what we'll do is we will try to find this again. But this time, I would consider this element, which is uh, supposing this is my bar, which is uh, uh, one previous to the bar. I would consider that as the maximum. That means I would compare the previous maximum and the new maximum. Which one is the biggest? I would I would take the maximum of those two. Then I would say, okay, my first minimum and the next possible minimum. A little possibility i'll compare these two out of this out of these two which one is the minimum i'll take that so then i would have two values again of of one uh, maximum tower and one minimum tower what i'll do i'll get the difference of it and if the difference is a smaller than the previous uh, previous difference that we have found then we would consider that one and we would give that as our answer so this slide is a slightly tricky question but it is just the concept that you have to grasp and uh, let's try to see the code of it so that everything can be much clearer to you. So coming to the code of it, let's try to understand this. Well, as you can see, I'm just keeping the track of the length here in this variable n, and then I have sorted the array. 
here i have found the result element with the last and the first after being sorted that means minimum and maximum values the current difference is this much then what do we have to do we have to iterate for the point okay for that particular point i'm going to check okay whether my arr i minus k if that is less than zero that means if it is going negative then i'll simply continue and i would not perform these operations and once this loop has run for like Till I, uh, till I have found the point where my values are turning positive, then this would do the work. Okay, what would it do? The minimum height, how, what are we doing here? I'm just keeping the track of minimum of ARR zero plus K, the element that we have previously, comma, ARR I minus K. Which one of these is minimum? Then what I'll do, I'll try to check maximum. Okay, maximum of ARR I minus one, one previous element from the I point, this one plus k. Let me also form the diagram. Let me drag this diagram here. This ARR i minus one. That means assuming this is our i point, so i minus one, this value, which is being added with k, and then ARR n minus one, which we have subtracted by k. All right, we will keep the maximum of these two and minimum of this value and this value. Fine. So once we have kept these two variables, like for every situation, we'd be calculating the minimum i'm minimizing my result variable and every time i'm doing maximum h value my a minus minimum h value so once i have done that and my loop has successfully executed eventually i can just simply return my result and it would be having the correct answer okay so just have a uh, let's have a slight discussion upon the complexity of it well what we are doing here in terms of the loop is we are just iterating in the array from one point till the other and n are the elements so operations that we are taking are just n order of n will be the complexity of it are we taking any extra space no we are not taking any extra space in this loop but this is not it we have also sorted the array it was not mentioned in the question that it would already be sorted so majorly we would have n log n okay for the time complexity and also for the space you can have order of n the space being used so the major things that we have, the major um, uh, complexities that we have is n log n. n log n would be considered as the complexity of this approach and order of n up, uh, is going to be for the simple sorting a space that we are taking. Now let's try to run this code and see how it is passing all the test cases. So here's the code. Let's try to compile and run it. Okay, so it is giving us the expected output. Let's try to submit it. All right, so it is passing all of the test cases. So I hope now you have got this approach very clearly. If still you have any doubt, then make sure you try it on the code yourself with a, with a diagram and a sample case, then you would understand perfectly how it is working. Thank you.